The Tabernas Desert, considered the sole desert in continental Europe, is located in Spain. Surprisingly, studies indicate Spain is on track to become arid entirely in the next 80 years. Currently, 31.5% of the country is already experiencing desertification, and 18% face a serious threat of being permanently dry. Yet, Spain has made some amazing restoration progress, converting vast regions that were becoming deserts into productive soil. With only 11 inches of rain falling annually in the semi-arid areas of Spain, this metamorphosis is a significant feat. Join us as we look at one of Spain's incredible restoration initiatives to re-green the desert and make it a productive land. The Spanish country is largely being turned into a desert. For instance, years of excessive water extraction to irrigate rice fields and olive trees have resulted in severe water shortages in the Guadalquivir River Basin. The issue of water scarcity and land loss may be more severe in coastal areas. The Desierto de Tabernas, also known as the Tabernas Desert, is the only desert in Spain. The remainder of the nation is covered in farms. In fact, farming and raising animals occupy around half of all the land in Spain. 33% of this half comprises farming, while 16% is pasture or meadowland. The Spanish economy has benefited from this industrial-scale farming. One of the main drivers of the Spanish economy is the agri-food sector, which accounts for 5.8% of the country's GDP, 11% when trade is taken into account. It is one of the top five exporting industries, accounting for almost 60 billion euros or 17% of all exports, while posting a trade surplus close to 1% of GDP. But because the economy and agricultural environment are dependent on agricultural productivity, which is threatened by climate change, several repercussions resulting from rising temperatures could significantly negatively impact both. Currently, 50% of Spain is classified as arid, making it the driest country in Europe. Almost half of the country is classified as at risk from desertification, with Andalusia and Mosha regarded as the most vulnerable areas in the country. The question then is, what is causing this desertification in Spain? There are reasons behind the region's desertification. In fact, research into the phenomenon reveals that human actions like overfarming and over-irrigation have a significant impact on the condition. Because of these operations, the earth has deteriorated, draining the aquifers. Some agricultural methods causing desertification in southern Spain include over-cultivation, overgrazing, and lowering groundwater levels. Over-cultivation ultimately causes desertification when nutrients become insufficient to the point of being unproductive. As a result, the soil is less stable and is more vulnerable to wind and water erosion. The intense cultivation of olive trees in Andalusia results in an annual loss of topsoil of 80 million tons. Another reason for desertification in Spain can be attributed to development. Over the past 50 years, tourism has grown significantly. Every year over the past five years, 180,000 vacation homes have been constructed along the shore the major effect of tourism, contributing to desertification, is the pressure on the water supply to supply swimming pools, water parks, and golf courses. The $60 billion agriculture sector in southern Spain is one of the areas most hit by desertification. The south of Spain, already among the driest regions in Europe, suffers from a lack of regular rainfall. Therefore, the outcome of adding a highly industrialized agricultural sector that heavily utilizes natural resources is the rapid desertification of the land. Apart from human activities, other naturally occurring phenomena also contribute greatly to the expansion of deserts in Spain, for example, climate change. The rate of evapotranspiration has increased as a result of changes to the climate by an average temperature of 1.5 degrees Celsius in the last 100 years, with rainfall in Andalusia dropping by a rate of 9.5 percent between 1991 and 2000. Climate change causes disastrous effects of hotter climates, with an increase in the risk of forest fires. 
leading to deforestation and desertification. In the past, deforestation caused soil erosion, which contributed to the disastrous downfall of civilizations in lush Central America, as well as tough, inaccessible locations like Greenland, home to the Vikings, and Easter Island, home to the Polynesians, Maya peoples, because the once highly fruitful areas are now incapable of producing enough crops to sustain people and animals. The lands are not delivering their best. Will Spain actually turn into a desert despite this? The Spanish government's recent declaration of a climate and environmental emergency has rekindled public concern over desertification. Much like global warming, those actively concerned with the issue of desertification are usually the green earthers and climate change enthusiasts until, of course, these issues begin to have a more wide-reaching effect, such as affecting the economy and gross domestic product of the country or region as a whole. What then are the economic effects of this desertification in Spain? The latest signs of increased desertification highlight how many species on Earth, including humans, are in danger due to present land management practices. The effects of human population growth on land and natural resources are so significant that food systems account for 70% of freshwater usage worldwide and 80% deforestation. They also contribute significantly to producing greenhouse gases that actively change the planet's climate. The UNCCD looked into the effects of ignoring soil and biodiversity, including suggestions for improving sustainable development and restoring the environment and food systems. According to the UNCCD scientists, natural capital contributes significantly or moderately to more than half of the world's annual GDP, or over $44 trillion, 42 trillion euros. It is estimated that restoring land and lowering degradation, greenhouse gas emissions, and biodiversity loss could have an annual economic benefit of 125 to 140 trillion dollars 119 to 133 trillion euros the study emphasized how agriculture which uses around 37 percent of the world's land may have a significant impact on 75 percent of all land human activity has greatly impacted natural processes in other words, the production economic paradigm will soon be in danger. In addition to stepping up its efforts to combat climate change, Spain and other countries in the European Union must create a specific legal framework for desertification and land degradation to counter this trend. If emissions continue at the current rate, the damage in Spain, where major climate-related disasters alone have cost losses of 25 billion euros in the last 30 years, of which half are connected to drought, might increase significantly. In 2050, this scenario would result in a 2 degrees Celsius rise in temperatures relative to pre-industrial times, which might result in a greater than 7% decline in national GDP. The losses would equal 2.5% of GDP, even if the temperature rose by only 1.5 degrees Celsius. As we can already see, the loss of agriculturally productive land will accelerate the migration of people from rural areas to urban areas. The number of retired people from northern countries currently residing in the Mediterranean region may decrease as more people, especially the elderly, relocate north. It is foreseen that the development of demographic deserts in Spain as more people move from the core of the nation, which is already experiencing enormous depopulation, to coastal regions with milder climates. What then is Spain doing about the desertification of her lands? A strategy was used in 2008 by the Spanish National Action Programme against desertification PAND to identify five desertification landscapes throughout Spain using socio-economic and climatic data. Sadly, the PAND was accurate in addition to being innovative. Spain's desertification problem has gotten worse, and in the first two decades of the 21st century, an agri-food model has gained strength. Its dynamics have made the PAND's desertification processes worse. The PAND was valuable from a scientific standpoint but it had no clear course of action, 
and was unconnected to the diagnosis. Because of this, the diagnosis it offered needed to be followed by sensible steps to stop Spain's desertification. A fresh approach to stop desertification is necessary for light of the Spanish government's recent declaration of a climate and environmental emergency. What are the possible solutions that are being preferred? There is room for action, which is good news. Countries can make a difference by controlling certain reckless human behaviors, such as the excessive or inefficient water use, and combating climate change. Similar to other EU nations, Spain also uses the Common Agricultural Policy to finance its farmers' participation in environmental initiatives. In specific environmental situations like drought, EU nations are also permitted to contribute additional cash, which Spain has done for farmers. Creating a new strategy to combat desertification stands out among the compromises made. By strengthening synergies with rural development policies, biodiversity protection and recognition of environmental services, the promotion of energy transition opportunities and renewable energies, the Spanish government emphasizes the necessity of articulating it within a framework of collaborative action. The new Spanish National Action Plan to Combat Desertification PAND, the official abbreviation, may present a chance to link initiatives across sectors and introduce laws that coordinate the efforts of the various administrations concerned. The national strategy for the fight against desertification will involve participation from national and municipal authorities, academics, non-governmental organizations, farmers, and other stakeholders until 2030. It encourages measures to rehabilitate degraded soil while promoting biodiversity and ecological resilience in the driest parts of the country. The overall objective is to help preserve and recover the natural capital associated with the dry, semi-arid, and dry subhumid zones of Spain and move closer to neutrality in terms of land degradation by halting and reducing desertification and reclaiming areas that have been damaged. The national policy will create a network of test sites for land restoration and encourage best practices in forestry, land management, soil conservation, and water resource management. The plan also asks for a national council to direct efforts to stop desertification, a public information platform, and a desertification atlas. One of the key objectives of the new strategy is to restore and recover the impacted areas. However, only some of the damage can be repaired. The Andalusia area has offered additional incentives to support environmentally friendly farming practices and promote sustainable agriculture. Detmar Roth, the deputy mayor of Vélez Blanco, an Andalusian community of about 2,000 people who work with Alvel Al, a Dutch-funded farmers initiative attempting to regenerate the area's worn-out soils, believes farming is highly essential to the local economy and keeps people from leaving rural areas. Certain organizations have also stood up to take charge of the efforts to resolve the desertification process, such as the Alvel Al and Eco Business Movement, which has launched a 20-year program to revive the biodiversity of the nation's devastated areas. Almost 1 million hectares of land are included in the project, which also touches Almeria, Granada, and Murcia. A group of growers and business people dedicated to creating plans and regeneration strategies to restore the soil to its former wonderful fertility created Alvel Al. Philanthropists and overseas investors interested in the program provide funding for the organization. Alvel Al is also establishing ecological almond trees on a scale comparable to Madrid. Almond trees in this amount have never before been produced anywhere else in the world. The size of the land might go up to 50,000 hectares. Many people are working on this project. Over 250 business owners, academics, and other environmentalists make up the Alvel Al Group. The association also receives funding from companies like TUI Group and Leopold Bachmann. Remarkably, Alvel Al's regeneration initiative uses tree-based crops to cover over 8,000 hectares and up to 40 farmlands. Yet, this group still has a two-year expansion plan for its activity region. 
Another excellent suggestion is to partially employ Almeria's greenhouses for bigger forestation initiatives. We could restore Spain's forests to their former glory if everyone made only a small effort and joined forces to re-green the arid regions. Desertification is silent in Spain. However, erosion consumes plants year after year before the end of the century and two-thirds of the nation may turn into a desert. While some locals emigrate to cities in quest of a better future, others are steadfast in their resolve to fight back. What do you think of the restoration efforts and the desertification of Spain? Please post your comments below and let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, kindly like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content. Thank you.